Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us for this session. Uh, I'm Paul Judge. Uh, this is David Maynard. Uh, what we want to spend some time on today is uh, search malware. Uh, share with you some of the results that uh, we've seen. Uh, we, for the, probably the last several months, have been looking into this issue. Uh, certainly over the last year, there have been uh, many examples of, of malware uh, poisoning uh, popular search terms. I think we've all seen examples over the last year. Uh, so what our goal was to do was to really kind of understand uh, how much this is happening, understand where it's happening, understand a little bit more about, more, uh, more about how it's happening. And so as we dug into this, I mean, one of the things that was, was pretty obvious here is kind of why the attackers are, are focused on the search engines. I mean, the, the number of uh, eyeballs that are showing up on search engines every day is, is growing rapidly. I mean, if you look at the latest numbers uh, from the search engines, uh, you look at Microsoft, uh, look at Yahoo, uh, even Twitter now and, and Google, uh, you know, there are hundreds of millions of searches done on each one of these every day. Uh, Microsoft uh, totals in at over uh, 4 billion searches a day. Uh, Yahoo at over 9 billion a day. Uh, Twitter now uh, is claiming over 24 billion, uh, excuse me, a month. I said a day, but a month. Uh, and, and Google, of course, leaves with, with over 80 billion uh, searches a month. So the point is, the, as more information and more users come online, uh, we all use search engines more and more. I know I've personally kind of come to the point that I'm so lazy that even if I know I'm going to a site like CNN, instead of just typing CNN.com, I don't have time to type the extra four characters, so I just put it in my search toolbar and let it do the work, right? I see a lot of heads nodding, so a lot of people have, have uh, kind of developed that, that habit. Right, so the point is there's so many people going to search engines every day. And the attackers are realized this day is a pretty good place to focus to get in front of eyeballs. And so what we wanted to do was understand kind of how they're targeting uh, particular terms, how much they're targeting particular terms, are there particular categories that are more popular and, and so forth. So with that, we, we, we set up a, uh, a system, a methodology that crawled the different search engines. And it actually around the clock pulled and looked at what were the most popular search terms for Yahoo, for Bing, for Twitter, and for, for Google. And it looked at those most popular trendy search terms around the clock and looked at what were the search results for those. And so we pulled those search results uh, and then actually pulled the pages that those were pointing to and, and analyzed them. So if you look at what we looked at, it was four different search engines uh, over about two months, 57 days to be precise. Uh, in that time frame, there were 25,000 popular topics that, that we examined and then over 5 million actual search results. So we want to dig into is like what we found. So you know, one of the, the first points is we found malware. All right, anybody surprised by that? Over 8,000 examples of malware uh, across the different engines. Uh, if you look at the, the breakdown, you know, the leader is Google uh, with 69% of the malware that we found being found on results uh, from the Google search engine. Uh, after that was, was Yahoo. Uh, with 18%, uh, Bing with 12%. This is one of the first times in life Microsoft actually has this advantage of having little market share, so kind of been the, the least attacked platform, right? Uh, the other one that you see on there is Twitter with 1%. And at first this was a little strange to us because we were pretty familiar with kind of how much malicious activity and misuse was happening on Twitter. But you know, one of the things that kind of we, we understood as we dug into this is well, what happens is with Twitter, you know, if you think about how a search engine works, it actually organizes and ranks results. And so it makes it pretty easy for an attacker to use search engine optimization to actually make sure they're in that set of results that a user gets. Whereas with Twitter, for most of the time, the way their searches work, they just give you a snapshot of who's talking about this right now. So there's not that ranking, there's not that prioritization. And so for an attacker to try to uh, poison a search engine, they're able to make sure they get their attacks in the top. For Twitter, they're more so kind of playing the odds and seeing where they end up in that random stream. And so this is what explains this only 1% number. Uh, but as we get further along, we're going to show some examples of uh, specifically the types of things that are happening inside of Twitter. So if you look at the, the daily uh, activity uh, for each of the engines, um, you saw you know, every day uh, Google led the pack. Uh, you know, different days, uh, uh, different engines had a, a little bit more or, or, or less. Uh, but what becomes you know, interesting is pretty much every day each engine led to something malicious. You know, no engine really took a day off. Uh, but if you look at the different days of the week, one of the first things that we wanted to look at was hey, if you look across the week, are there particular days that have more activity? And the short answer is no, not really. Uh, Tuesday led uh, about a little bit, represented about 16.7% of the overall malware for the week. But there wasn't a strong correlation about the day of the week. 
But what was a little interesting is if you look at the time of the day. So these time periods are based on uh, an Eastern Standard Time. But if you look at the 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. blank, uh, really over 50 percent of the malware was found in this, in this cycle. You were going uh, to uh, ‑‑ usually Dave points out uh, kind of the things that are happening at, at this time of the night or what's happening at that time of the day in, in, if you're in Europe. But the next thing that we looked at, we're seeing that, you know, between the 11 to 5 a.m. slot, uh, over 50% of the malware was showing up. So if you think about this engine running uh, around the clock, pulling the popular search terms, pulling the results, and then analyzing those, we had over 50% of the activity in that six hour block that was the end of the night. Another question that we looked to answer was uh, were these known attacks or were these t attacks that were new? Uh, kind of what types of uh, attacks or malware are they uh, using on the other end of search poisoning? So this looks at kind of the over time uh, the amount of malware that was detected each day that was kind of found on the previous day but wasn't detected till later. You want to add to that or is that? So uh, let's take a break for a moment. How many people are here because they couldn't get to the Barnaby Jack talk? <laughs> Raise your hands. You're a bunch of lying people, you know that? <laughs> so uh, it, it's funny, let's, let's go back a, a second. Um, the malware captured by time. So. Uh, you know, everything in my world is uh, is uh, acclimated by Eastern Standard Time, which is the best time zone. However, we uh, we, we take a look at the uh, the breakdown in time, and um, no one on the East Coast is working between 11 and 5, unless you're asking if you want fries with that. So, if you if you take a look and correlate this, uh, who is working uh, generally are people in Eastern Europe or in uh, in Asia somewhere. That that kind of fits into a weird kind of hacker time. Because you also have to invert the uh, the time that people you, you would think that normal people work and uh, and make that you know hacker time. So the uh, the amount of malware detected each day um, it is it's kind of a funny thing because it went you know, I was expecting uh, when we and we went into this research, uh, you know, completely uh, w w with our own biases, and we thought, you know, we, we had ideas of what we'd find. And the the, the days that seemed to uh, to have the most malware were the days that uh, seemed to correlate to the, the the biggest like pop culture events, like the MTV Music Awards, and, you know, uh, things like that. Uh, and, and this kind of represented in the chart. So uh, we started re this research, and research ran for uh, for 57 days. And that, that, that's a, uh, a number we picked that we felt would be a good uh, indication of, uh, you know, total traffic. So it ran for 57 days from, you know, April to June. And there were a lot of uh, kind of pop culture stuff that happened in there. As you see towards the end of the graph, uh, you know, that, that's World Cup malware and stuff like that. At the beginning it's more, you know, Justin Bieber malware. <laughs> so. And if anybody thinks that kid's not evil, this is the second talk we give him this week, and he, he's a primary reason why people's machines get infected. So if you have kids and they, they buy Justin Bieber CDs, tell them they're going to get viruses. <laughs> Got it. So if you look at this, kind of one of the, the, the points of this particular point is that, you know, 98 percent of the, the, the malware that we found on the other end of these search results was identifiable by the, the techniques that we use. So, you know, one of the things to, to understand is you look at the results that we pulled and the ways that we analyzed them. So we used uh, three different methods. Uh, one was a traditional uh, category-based URL filtering database. So kind of looking at the URL and seeing what category of site is this. Right, so everybody kind of understands the limitations there. Uh, a second source that we use uh, was Google's Safe Browse lookups. Okay, so everyone kind of understands the the Safe Browse lookup. The the third uh, type of analysis that we use uh, was a, a malicious JavaScript detector. And so what this does is actually kind of pull the JavaScript uh, that's sitting on the page and look for behavior that, that indicates uh, kind of unwanted activity. Uh, looking for, you know, too many create elements, looking for uh, code that's being re within the browser and so forth. So those are kind of really the three uh, detection techniques that we use to flag the different malware. And the point here is 98 percent of the malware that were on the other side of these search results were detectable. Right, so kind of the good news is there is that attackers aren't using uh, kind of true, uh, say, zero day uh, on the other end of search results. 98% uh, of the stuff uh, is detectable if someone was actually using something in between them. So, we, for, yeah, basically, as David said, kind of pointed out, uh, looking at the low hanging fruit. So we'll look at some examples in a, in a second. You know, one of the other interesting things uh, that we came across uh, in this is really looking at the relationship between the different search engines. Uh, if you look at something that pops up on Twitter versus something that pops up on Google or Bing or Yahoo, kind of what's the difference in timing or delay? 
on the time that it shows up on Twitter and the times it shows up on different search engines. And so this takes a look at this. This looks at the top 10 trendy topics on Twitter and looks at how long it took them to show up on a different search engine. And so the green bar here is the number of days on Yahoo, the red bar is on Bing, uh, the blue bar is, is on Google. If there's no bar, it didn't show up. Exactly. So if there's no bar, uh, it, it didn't show up on the other search engines. And so what you see is, is this delay. Uh, and so what happened is on average, it took 1.2 days for something to become a trendy topic on, on Google after it became a trendy topic on Twitter. It took about f a little over four days, 4.3 days to become a, a trendy topic on Bing uh, and you know, 4.8 days on Yahoo. And so what's interesting, this was now the set of things that were trendy topics on Twitter. Now there were things that were trendy topics on the search engines that were not on Twitter. And so what we saw in general is like things that were kind of culture related or, or pop related uh, became trendy topics on Twitter first and things that were like more serious news like the all spill or election results, those things became trendy topics on the search engine uh, before they became topics on Twitter. And I mean kind of the, one of the points in understanding this is you know from an attacker's viewpoint kind of where should you target your attacks first. If you see kind of the timing of when things move from one network to another and they're going to become popular and going to become things that people are searching for, uh, this gives a pretty interesting roadmap for where you should spend your attention early on in a particular event that's happening. So, so when you go home, make sure you tell your kids that if they search for news sites, they're less likely to get malware than if they search for Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> we really don't like that kid, I, I got to be honest. <laughs> So here's a view of kind of all the trending topics that we looked at. Over the 25,000 trending topics, what types of sites were, 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 were trending? So what are the categories? And so one of the top things here is news. So 26% of the sites uh, that were trending were news sites. Uh, after that was entertainment. So 23% of the sites were, were entertainment. And after that, things pointed to news groups and to streaming media and so forth. So no big surprises here. People like news and people like entertainment. Right now, if you take a look at the top uh, categories for malware, it's a little different. You know, one of the things you see here is the top site is, is uh, category spyware. So 35% of the sites they were pointing to were classified by traditional URL filtering engine as being bad sites. So these were sites that were known to continually to carry malware over time. So that's kind of the, the good news. We were able to capture a third of this just with, based with web filtering technology. But then you see entertainment here. Uh, you see search engines here. Uh, you, you don't see news pretty high up in the, in the results. So one thing we want to look at were the particular categories that malware liked or, or didn't like. So you know what we saw is these are the top ten uh, categories overall. Uh, so news being one, entertainment, then forum and news groups. If you look at the third column, that's the ranking for malware. So news, while it was the number one site overall for trending topics, it was number 17 for malware. Uh, if you look at streaming media, while it was number four overall, it was 21 for malware. Uh, you know, sports, uh, similarly, number six overall, but 14 for malware. So this shows examples of the types of sites that malware doesn't necessarily, authors don't necessarily particularly like to, to target. But then if you look at uh, categories that are popular, you see some names that you would expect. You see kind of overall the malware ranking for hosting sites is number five, where in general uh, it's 20. You look at peer to peer, it's number six for malware, but number 46 overall. So you see some of the uh, usual suspects, uh, hosting, peer to peer and proxy sites uh, being targeted uh, by the search terms where they're, they're leading to. Kind of from there, I want to transition a little bit over to some more specific, like looking at the domains and looking at some actual examples of, of malware that we saw on the other side of these links. So you want to walk through? So uh, these, these aren't a lot of big surprises, um, except for the Poland thing. I mean, the, 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 the most malware we found seemed to be hosted in Poland and although that's technically somewhere around the Eastern European place that we all, everybody quotes to the media all the malware comes from, I just didn't think the Polish had it in them. But apparently they did. What? <laughs> right. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's normal stuff. Uh, uh, Casa.com, uh, five ounces of pain. MC Hawking. You know what? It's, it, it might sound like to you we've never looked at these before, but every time we look at these, it's just shocking. And what is this hope? The the hope. Oh, no. Don't know. But uh, you know these are these are the top domains that we found. And like I said, a uh, little like Paul said, we use three different methods uh, to do this: the, uh, the the Google Safe Browse, our internal database, and uh, a tool called MJD. And we would cross we would uh, cross verify the results with each one of those tools, and actually you know go and do random spot checks to make sure we were actually getting malware and it wasn't just uh, false positives. So here, here's an example uh, of a guy named LeBron James. I don't personally know who he is. I think he's a golfer. Uh, apparently his wife hit him with a club or something. 
I don't know.